Hey everyone, I'm Man Cup from Weld.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to dial your MIG machine in. We're going to be working from a 22 gauge all the way to 3 8 carbon steel plate. Today I'm going to be using the Everlast Power iMIG 315. Uh, the type of gas I'm using is CO2. The type of wire is ER70S6 and the size of the wire is 030. First, I'm just going to grab 22 gauge, start with the littlest. I just flipped the machine on, so we're at 18.1 volts and 96. So we're going to start with 22 gauge and we're just going to listen to it and see how it sounds. And we're going to slowly make adjustments until uh, I like the noise. Bacon frying. So this might sound a little strange how I'm doing this, but it will make sense at the end. So we're going to start with 22 gauge. I'm running CO2, 25 CFH. We're going to tune this machine in on the flat. The reason we don't want to just grab a T-joint like this and set up, because we don't know if our machine's tuned in or not. And we're going to sit here and just hold this, and we're going to be fighting with it. So it's easier to just get it best as you can tuned in on the flat piece of plate, so you don't have to go holding it forever. Then we'll tune in the rest of the way on this T-joint. All right, just by listening to that, and I see that wire balling up too. It's saying I need more wire phase speed. It's like not even fusing in. It's pretty horrible. Just by listening to that sound, how it's not melting in good and it's just stacking on top of each other. We're at 18.0 volts. We're pretty high on our volts. So wire feed speed, we're gonna crank up our wire feed speed. Then we'll probably adjust our volts down a little lower. We'll adjust one at a time until we get really close to that sweet setting. All right, hear that? Sounds a lot better. It's not too shabby there. Hear that sound? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stop here. So I need a little bit more wire feed speed or I could adjust my volts down a little bit. We're gonna move this down a half a volt. The reason why I'm going a half, to half a volt instead of going up on my wire feed speed is way, way too much penetration. See, that, that's the back side actually. That's the front side. We're way more consistent. Look at that, we're creating a boil puddle now. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. All right. So it got a little hard start, but when it's warmed up, it's okay. So when we first, well, as soon as we pulled the trigger, it was cold starting out. You could hear it. It like stuttered a little bit. Then about three or four seconds after it got running, it was still kind of cold, but then the, the plate obviously got warmed up because it's so thin. Then the bead got a little bit more flatter. And that's what we're kind of looking for is right there. But we're going to turn up the wire feed speed a little bit more, probably 10, and leave our volts there and uh, try to find a better setting. All right, so did you hear that start? A lot better arc initiation started right up and it leveled right out. The more we continued down, the plate heated up a little bit and more of the weld flattened out and we got really great tie-ins. So I think we're pretty much ready to go ahead and tack it and run probably half of the T-joint. So when you're holding up your T-joint, make sure there's no gap, because that gap will mess you up bad with sheet metal. There we go here. It's not good. All right, so when I pulled the trigger, uh, you guys heard it was stuttering. It was trying to start, trying to initiate an arc. Then eventually it did, it heated up. So we're gonna crank up our volts. I need a little bit more heat, but I wanna see if the puddle will wet out a little bit more with volts. Uh, I think we definitely will need wire feed speed, but I wanna change one thing at a time. That's what I do. Uh, it's the best way to do one thing at a time. Never do both. And we're gonna go ahead and change the volts a little bit, see if it, it uh, straightens that start out. And then we're gonna maybe change the wire feed speed. We'll see. So I don't like that stutter. Uh, you can hear it as soon as I pull the trigger and it's stuttering. So we're going to crank up the wire feed speed by 10 and then the volts are going to remain the same. All right, so that came out pretty good. Remember, we're running 030 wire. 22 gauge is 30,000, the same thickness as the wire. That ran really good, we ran fast. You want to minimize the heat going onto that base metal. That little stutter at the three quarters of the way in. My whip was kind of tight right here, so that kind of made the wire jagger a little bit. So I'm happy with them settings. It sounded great. You guys heard it. So just by hearing that sound of the bacon, bacon frying in a pan, just that sound, you could walk by somebody and you could tell if they're tuned in or not. Um, so always remember that sound. 
we're going to go ahead and move on from 18 gauge all the way to 3 8 We're going to give you what I think is going to be the best settings on each one. Quarter inch is usually the max with short circuit. When you go past quarter inch, you usually do a little spray transfer, throw some oxygen or 9010 in there, carbon dioxide and argon. So we're turning up our wire feed speed a lot because we want to jam that root in there really good and bite in. Then the volts we're going to crank up too. So that's what we want is make sure we're biting in good. So we did 22 gauge all the way to 3 8. The main thing is to listen to that bacon sound noise because you can walk up to any welder or walking by anybody and tell if their machine's tuned in when you're doing short circuit mode. Write these settings down, put them somewhere safe. Because six months later, you ain't gonna remember them. You're doing a thousand things here at work or a thousand things at home. I hope these help, these settings, because these are my personal settings on this machine. I'm Man Cub from overweld.com. Hashtag weld mean, weld green.